Alright. Um, hello, Eden. Eden. Can I hear your voice? Yes, sorry, my volume was off on accident, but I can hear you, know you now. My volume was off. On accident, Wait, but I'm, my I can hear you really now. Low. Oh, that's why. Okay, now I hear yeah. you. Ah, there we go. Now I hear you nice and well. Okay. Akiva, you probably could talk. I could probably hear Just my volume was down. So if you want to... Uh... Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you fine. Great. Colin's joining okay. now. All right. Awesome. So let's dive right in. It looks like you guys are the only ones here so far. No one's in person yet. So uh, I'll be speaking a little bit to the camera. Uh, we're on lesson four, uh, page 112. And Hi, Rarity. Hello, Tal. Welcome. Hi. So we're going to recap what we did in the last few sessions, and then we are going to dive right in. So in lesson one, we learned that wealth can be good or bad, depending on how you look at it. And lesson two, we discussed how Rachel is coming. In lesson two, we learned that... Um, there are not only is it, it can be good or bad there's actually ways that we should be wealthy because there is good there's a good side to being wealthy welcome rachel we're just going through the recap now and that is that we can be a, in a position of power to do more good in the world and we can uh we can also be um rich very rich because the richer we are the more power we are the more good that we're doing in the world in lesson three, we learn the flip side is also a good side. Oh, I'm sorry. Lesson two, we also cover the idea that money itself is good, right? And in lesson three, we learn that uh, there's a good side to being poor, too, because it teaches you to be more sensitive. And we don't pray to be poor, but there are advantages to either side. There's advantages to being rich, there's advantages to being poor. And whatever we are created, that is, we're created with those advantages. And then right at the end of lesson three, as we always do, we go very fast. So I'll just want to dwell a little more on this. And that is that genuine happiness is internal, not from money, but from realizing your purpose in this world. And what's our purpose in this world? To do what Hashem created us to do, which is to do mitzvot and Torah as a Jewish person. For a non-Jew, it may not be that. It may be there are mitzvot for a non-Jew too. But for a Jew, that is what we carry carry with that purpose. When we do our purpose, we are we are being the happiest person we can be. It's like a robot that doesn't act like a robot. It'll be a very unhappy robot, right? Or a flower that tries to act like a piece of mud, right? It will just will die. But if a flower tries to act like a flower, then it will be happy. So us people, if we try to act like a cow or we try to act like um, a rapper next door, or we try to act like um, our great uncle, who was fabulously wealthy, but didn't have the right morals, then we won't be happy. But if we live by ourselves, our own life, then we will truly be happy. And there's a fascinating story on that, that Zusha, Zusha of Anipal, he used to say, when I go up to heaven, they're not gonna ask me, why won't you great like Moses? And why were you smart like Rabbi Akiva? And why weren't you charitable like Rabbi Yehuda Anasi? Give so much away to charity. He's going to ask me, why weren't you good like Zusha? Why weren't you as good as Zusha could be? We're not being tasked with being the best uh, person in the class or the best Jack or Jill. We're being tasked with being the best us. And that's how we were created. We don't get to choose over that, but we do get to choose how what we do with those gifts. So celebrate our gifts and make the best of, the best of them. And now lesson four, four, we really dive into work, work itself. So please, everyone on Zoom, um, if you can keep your cameras on, number one, and if you can please um, unmute yourself if you are able to, and there's no background noise, then please do so. If there is background noise, then we totally understand if you're muted. And I'd like to thank Rachel for coming in person. Am I the only one? There's another, but he's coming late. And then Nathan uh, was not able to come today. We'll be here next week. Yeah, there'll be another boy coming, so it'll be you guys. Chill out. 
Um, so Rachel, thank you very much for coming in person. And I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite drink at Starbucks? Mm, I just like the pink drink. Pink drink? Yeah. Just ask the pink drink. Do you know what it is? Oh, I know you're talking about the tea. It's a refresher. Oh, it's a refresher? Yeah. Okay. And another question is, um, oh, we'll save this family class. Um, well, how about you guys? What's your favorite drink to have at Starbucks? It really depends, like, tall you're muted, but it really depends, like, what I'm in the mood for. Like, I don't know. I have, like, different moods, but usually I like coffee. Coffee? Okay. For me, it's either, yeah, for me, it's either chai or white mocha, both iced. Yeah, the same as tall, basically. Yeah. Um, white mocha. Mango dragon fruit iced tea. Dragon fruit ice cream. Akiva, Mango where are you at Costco fruit. right now? Because I am. I don't even know. You're just walking around? No. I mean, yeah, but like, no. Okay. Akiva, you're on Costco now? I saw when he turned his camera on. I recognize the background. Okay. Um... Lesson four. Big idea number one, we are going to talk about how work itself is important. Work. Big idea number two, we're going to talk about how work actually makes us healthier and happier. And big idea number three, we're going to talk about how we can build a home. And that is the true way of working, working to build a home. What does that mean? Let's dive right in. Those are the three basic ideas. You have this paper in front of you. So if you want to take notes as we talk, feel free to do so. So, big idea, big idea number one, that work itself is essential, work, work itself is important, and we're going to figure out why work is, can be even considered a mitzvah, according to some opinions, and considered a good deed. So, um, let's ask this question. If you lived in a place like this, would you work? Uh, live in a place like what yeah that's what i'm wondering uh it's on the camera oh right oh it depends on the reason why i'll work uh, whatever it is you well i mean make money that's true, so would you work working? you have everything made catered for your needs everything's good and you live in a gorgeous gorgeous paradise like this i mean i would work to live there but once i get there Maybe I, maybe I wouldn't work. I mean, since it's rhetoric, like it's a rhetorical question, I don't know exactly, but most likely I wouldn't when I get there. You wouldn't work. Okay. So what if I work because I love my job? Oh, okay. So then would you work in a place like this? And you, your job was there. There was a store there. Your favorite home goods. Would you work? Yeah. You would. Even though you have everything catered to your needs, everything yeah, you need. My life would be boring if I didn't work. Mm. Like. That's true. Yeah. Boring, yeah. Perfect. I mean, the one. Can you ever I, I don't know if it relates to. Seven days. Um, I like that. I'm with you. Seven hour vacation. Right. Now that I hear the the suggestion, like, what if the job is what you want, what you like to do, and what you're passionate about, I would still. Well, it wouldn't be work, first of all. My main goal in life is to just find something that wouldn't even feel like a chore or some like a bore to do. Like, sure, it's definitely work, but right. at least it's my passion. Right. So you would only want to work if it was something that you were like really driven to do. And then you yes. would work even in a place like this. <clears throat> even if you had all the food on the table, everything... You wouldn't you wouldn't go on the beach every day and just play piano. You would you would work. Would you, would, you would give up that for six hours job. every day and go work. 
Quit playing piano as part of your. You have to do that for six hours straight. No one usually does that. Legend, right? It would work. You wouldn't work as much. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, so how many hours a day would you work if you lived in a place like this? It's not three about up. the hours. It's about what you feel. Two or three hours. I'm saying if you're if you're rich enough that you can afford to live there and have everything catered to your needs and you don't need anything, there isn't any like time restriction that you have to work for six hours so you get this big of a paycheck. You just kind of work and then leave when you want to leave. Mm -hmm. And the working is just because otherwise, what's your purpose? Oh, Oof. deep words. Thank you, Akiva. What's your purpose? Well, let's go back to that slide. Um, and let's let's don't look at that just yet. Um, let me. Uh, yeah. Um, so here is the slide. We're not going to read it just yet, but we're going to look at text one and text two, and then we're going to contrast that with what we see on the screen. So in text one and text two, we're going to just introduce that work is something in, so essential that it's actually discussed at the very beginning of Torah, the very first portion of Torah, Bereshit, it discusses already working. Before it talks about loving your father and mother, and fearing God, and gunning out of Egypt, and and not killing and not stealing, it talks about work. You ready for this? It's going to blow your mind. Text one. Take it away, Rachel. Now God took the man and he placed him in the garden of Eden to work it and to guard it. Beautiful. Text one. God takes man and places him in the garden of Eden to work it and guard it. So first of all, who is man? Humans. Nope. If you look in the Hebrew, Adam. Exactly. The man should really be capitalized. It's a it's a noun, like the man, meaning the very first man, Adam. That was his name, but uh, if they're not going to capitalize, they at least put his name there. So if you want, you can cross out the word man and you could put Adam. God took Adam, which means the man. Um, he took Adam and he placed him in the Garden of Eden. And what does it say? What did he place him there in paradise? Which we just saw on the screen a second ago. What did he place him here in paradise for? Why did he place him there? To work and guard it. To work in the work, work and garden. In the garden. Welcome, Roy. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? you keep Sorry it? for being late. Uh, no. There's no. one that. It's over. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Turn the corner. Go straight. Okay. And right after the door, turn the corner and just keep it there. He took man. He placed him to work it and guard it. You see it? Right there. This is Genesis 2:15. It's the second chapter of the Torah. We already discussed how God takes Adam and places him in the paradise. Why? Why did he place him in paradise? To work. To work. Wait one second. Is there something odd with this picture? We just discussed how work is important. Well, see. he needs to maintain that paradise in order to keep it a paradise. Okay. It won't be so, a paradise if nobody's going to keep it that way. Right. That's true. Well, it's like saying, but, okay, the cleaning ladies just came. Right? Let's go and clean. No one says that. Everyone says, clean ladies just came. You can eat, make a little mess, just clean up after yourself, yeah. right? The very first thing, before he even gets in the Garden of Eden, before he even gets to paradise, God tells him what? To work. <laughs> oh, really? what, are, what are you doing? There's a perfect world in front of you. Everything's perfect. He walks into a perfect world. Literally, God created a perfect world. The trees are formed, there's animals around. He just doesn't have a, a, a girl next to him, but that, that's going to that, that's a count. But other than that, he has everything he needs. And the very first step is work. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? So, text two, and thank you very much, Roy, for coming in person. Appreciate that. High five. Of course. Hey, Tom. And I'll, I can give you right back. Yeah. You yeah. right? Yeah, I do. Thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, text two, Adam, uh, Roy, is <laughs> going to read about Adam, or <laughs> Adam will read about Roy. Okay. Text to page 117. You know, while you get the page, we're going to ask the first person on Zoom, Akiva. Akiva, please open up your book, Text 2, and read for us Text 2. Ruby, I, uh, I don't have my book with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's in uh, Costco. Akiva, what are you doing in Costco? Ask my mom. I don't know. 
I can read since I'm the second I person. Uh, I think Eden, yeah? Yeah, okay. Eden can read. Yeah. I, I think I keep taking this class way too seriously. We heard it's about working, and he went to work. He went to Costco. Going to Costco is work for him, especially when you're with your mom. Is it big idea number two? Oh, wait, um, text one? Text two, B, no, no, no. Text two, page one, seven, uh, what's the page? Uh, 80? 80. Text, 80. Text two, page 80, sorry. Adam. No, you're good. Text two, page 80. Right, Take it away, so. Eden. So great is work that Adam did not taste anything from the Garden of Eden until he did some work, as the verse states, and God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden to work and guard it. Wow. You see that, guys? Work itself is great. So that's why Hashem tells him, go and work. Apparently, like you see in the text, in the middle text over here, work is actually a very good ideal. So ideal, that's the very first step. Can you think of like a few other ideas God may tell Adam? Like, wouldn't it make more sense if he told him, hey Adam, um, be nice to your friend, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe he'd say, Set up a Mitzayim stand, a tefillin stand, and encourage people to be a Chabadnik and wrap tefillin. Maybe you say that. Mm -hmm. What else might he say besides for work? Well, what, what would make sense for God to tell Adam as he takes his very first step? Incredible. This guy is taking his very first step in a brand new world. This is like God's dream. It's finally happening. This is like beyond the palace. It's finally completed. Years in the making. God has his world, and he says, okay. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna give it to Adam. I don't know, it's the dumbest idea ever. I'm giving it to a guy. <laughs> you never give big projects like that to a guy. We know girls are good project managers. Yeah, but, but. <laughs> just give us a couch. We know what to do with that. But <laughs> I don't know. Give us a world. But what's to be his first instruction? What do you think? Um, go live is a word. I don't know. Live, I that. right? Like, yeah. That's the fullest. Right? Mm -hmm. Breathe it in. Don't yeah. steal. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't lie. Right, yes. The nose, exactly. The nose, you need to set boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Ten golden rules, you know? I'm sure God had a little plaque over there. It says ten golden But no, very first thing is work. It's like, kind of thing you hear, like, on a, um, on a, uh, one of those, um, one of those things that they give you before you go into college, you know? The, Different uh, options you can go into, you know? Yeah. Work, 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 you know, to reveal the work, work, work. You know, it's like four years in college to work, 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 you know? It's pretty, uh, pretty intense if you ask me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I gotta be rich. So yeah, you gotta be rich. You gotta so you work. work. Oh, or valedictorian. You gotta work so you don't need to work. Uh -huh. Why not just don't work? Because <laughs> then you have to work because you don't have money making, you don't, you don't have money working for you. Uh, just by the way, if you guys would rather I could say work in Australian accent, work, do you prefer that? Let's take a poll. If you write, rather work, work, raise your hand, um, work. Nah, I think that's the work, the work, 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 if you rather work, 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 work. I think we should train it so it changes like a rope. Rope. No? Just switch the W and the R. Rope. Mm -hmm. Rope. You do most of it. What's yeah. rope? All right, I'm let's talk about roking. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Webster's? Change it now. You got it right. All right. Text three. We will read this one outside. Abraham. He walks around to uh, different places. The world is just beginning, and he, people are trying new things. So in one place he comes to, a place called Aram, he sees people lazing around, just you know, being lazy. And he says, oh, I, I never want to have any part of this place. They have everything they need, they're good people, they're just lazy. And then he comes to Zor, which is the land of Israel, and he sees people working, and he says, oh, I want to be part of this working environment. People are working, the pioneers, the planting, the building seeds. I want to be part of this working environment. What did Abraham see in text 3 that... He so desperately loved that people were working, you know? Do you guys get very inspired when you see your parents working very hard and yeah. you don't pay attention? It's yeah. hard to say because my parents work a desk job. Oh, yeah. So. Right. Yeah, it's different to, like, labor, right? Yeah. 
Oh, but you can always be like, yeah, I want to work so I can spend more time. Or just like, so I don't have to work as much. Like, damn, it's a lot of work. Right. Well, let's find out why we work, right? Um, do text, text four. Text oh, four. Text four. Yes. Yeah. So you can do the first paragraph of text four. So we're going to see in text four how work is so important that our greatest leaders. It's funny how we all we introduce these ideas working, making money, rich. You know, these are the kind of things we associate with TikTokers and YouTubers, right? And talk about those stuff. Uh, possibly. Right? Or like uh, on the TED forum, you know? I don't know what that means. TED, you know TED, TED Talks? Yeah, no, no, I do. I do yeah. TED Talks. Right. yeah, those are cool. Right? Yeah. But like, it, right off the bat, would have you expected like Moses and Abraham to feature in these like working no. TED Talks? Hello, I am Moses. Welcome to Ted Talks. <laughs> I can tell you all about working. I lived 2,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. And when I worked, there was sheep and cattle. And we didn't have this thing called a phone or a uh, mouse. We had real mice. Thank you very much. So, text four, paragraph one. Work is so precious that all that hurt. That all the prophets engaged in it. Prophets, guys. Prophets, you hear that? Prophets are the holiest of the holy, right? They talk to God. And yet they were workers. Well, how, let's see how they were working. Regarding Jacob, it is stated, I will return and tend to the sheep. Regarding Moses, it is stated, and Moses was a sheep herd. Regarding shepherd. Shepherd, no. Regarding David, it stated, and God took David from the sheep pen. Regarding Amos, it stated, I am a cattle herder and an inspector of the sa Sycamore. sa sycamores, and God took me from following the flock. Okay, so some names you don't really recognize there, but do you recognize any names over there, Roy? Uh, Moses. Moses, right. And, I mean, maybe David, David. I don't know. King David. King David, David yeah. Exactly. And Amos was a more obscure prophet. He was also a prophet. But these guys were holy people, and yet they, when they started out their careers, they didn't go to prophet school. And it was like, oh, go to Hogwarts, you know? And they actually, yeah. they went to shepherd school, and they, like, took care of the shepherd's poop. That was their job. Very respectable for a prophet, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Paragraph two, Tal, continue in the precious work vibe. Work is so precious that God only rested his spirit upon Elisha, the son of Shaphat, when he worked, as it is stated. And he, Elijah, went from there and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, as he was plowing. What did Elijah tell him? Go, return for what I have done for you. He, for he did not want to take Elisha away from his work. Beautiful. So Elijah didn't want to even give him the spirit of prophecy because he was busy working. He was like, oh, not a good time, dude. I'm working. It's like, yo, not a good time for the million dollars. I'm busy working, right? You can become a prophet. Like, this is, if you read the Jewish text, becoming a prophet is the highest level of man mm -hmm. because it means that for the spirit of God to rest upon you, it means that you are totally, you have no ego, right? You have no feeling of, like, I am great. Otherwise, you're not letting God in. It's like an empty cup can let in a lot of water. So for a prophet to be able to let in God, they have to be completely empty of themselves, completely humble, and, and know a lot of Torah, and be wise and kind, sometimes even rich. Yeah, you can't think you're great. That's a good question. Yeah. How do you? So being humble doesn't actually mean you think you're dumb. It means that you're aware of your greatness, and you don't attribute your greatness to yourself, you attribute it to God, yeah, yeah. right? See, Moses, it says, that he was the he was the, the greatest prophet, mm -hmm. and he was also like an incredible leader. He led the Jewish people, he stood up to Pharaoh, who was like the superpower of his time. It's like standing up to uh, a guy in North Korea, you know? Mm -hmm. He was like, he stood up, he didn't sound like a humble guy to me, right? But he was because he was aware of his talents, and he used them out, but he say, oh, I'm so great because of me, my talents. He said, God made me great. He made gave me this talent. I'm going to use them now. But he was still humble about it, right? So you could who you at the same time. Good point. Thank you for that. So, yeah. So work is so important. So important, right? It's sometimes more important than prophecy. Getting the spirit of prophecy was more important, was less important to Eli Eli Elisha, the, the, the <coughs> successor of Elijah. It was more important that he work 
Then he we get prophecy. What is so important about working? Text five. We we dig our hole, our work hole, even deeper. And uh, of course, I keep it in every book. So we're back to Rachel for text five. And while Rachel reads this paragraph, these four paragraphs, see how many commandments you can spot. Okay. How many commandments can you spot in text five? Go for it, Rachel. Remember to Sabbath day to sanctify it. Sanctify it. Or sanctify it. Yeah. Six days, six days you shall work and perform all your days. Beautiful. Keep going. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall perform no labor, neither you, your son, your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, your beast, nor your stranger, nor who is in your city. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified it. Thank you very much, Rachel. Okay, shout out all the mitzvot, all the commandments, the doing actions that you can spot here. Uh, number eight, six days you shall work. Good. Six days you shall work. That's the commandment. Go work. Okay, what else? Seven. What's the commandment there? Remember the Sabbath day. Remem very good. Remember the Sabbath day. That's actually part of not just resting on Shabbat, but actually realizing what you're doing, being aware of it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the number nine. Seventh day you should perform no labor, right? You shouldn't work. You should, and then it says also you should rest. We didn't say that. And rest it on the seventh day, so therefore you should rest it. Okay? So it's like four different commandments. But what do you, what, what kind did you say? I said a, a six days you shall work. And perform exactly. Work. Six days you shall work. So most people, they take this commandment and they say, this is the commandment that teaches us. This is what we know about Shabbat. This is, the, this is it. If not for this, guys, we would be the party's animals on Shabbat. You rabbis would be riding those RVs around town, yo. Now, thanks to this paragraph, rabbis, to the most synagogue, you guys are invited to, and we sit, and we don't do any work, we relax. Funny joke, actually, someone else asked me, like, rabbis are always, like, saying, don't work, don't work on Shabbat. But rabbis are the one profession that always work on Shabbat. Because, really? yeah, they're giving speeches. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. running the services. <laughs> they're working the hardest. Yeah? Uh, that's true. Good point, right? It depends on what you consider what work is to you. Right. That's a good point. So in uh, the first course that we had in uh, Seaton University, we spoke that on Shabbat, you're not allowed to do uh, creative work, work that creates something. Actually, you're allowed to go and do 15,000 push-ups on Shabbat. Don't worry. You like can, physical work? Physical work. You can do as much physical work. You could run oh. from here all the way to uh, the ocean and back. Well, no, I mean, I thought you, can do you that. can't do that on Shabbat. You can't leave your house on Shabbat. Or, like, yeah, or like the city, right? Oh, that's a good point. The, yeah, it's a chum, I mean, the boundary. Yeah, right, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. And that's the civilized area. So as long as the area is still civilized, like it's houses, you're allowed to go there oh, as far as you get. It's when yeah. you hit the trees and the bushes and the, the forest. What stuff. about like riding a bike? Uh, is that a so that's that's a good question. Um, a two wheeled bike you're not allowed to. Oh. <laughs> Three wheeled bike you are allowed. To. Wait, why? Okay, it boils down to uh, the reason the reason why you can't drive a bike or, or drive a car or all these things because you might come to fix it. These things have a lot of parts, so you may come to fix it. So oh, a two wheeled okay. bike you may come to fix. A three wheeled bike you're less likely to come to fix because it's less mm -hmm. likely to break that easy. So you are allowed to do that as well. So you can drive a car in that case? No, yeah. Well, a car is another problem because you're creating a fire when you like use the ignition. Yeah. Make a spark. But it has yeah. four wheels. Right. So. Um, I know Tesla has been calling me up on the crazy. Elon Musk has been like, Rabbi, can you please allow a Tesla to drive? Oh, no. Sorry. So text six, same thing. We, we, we clarify the incredible mitzvah that we see over here, which is that Shabbat. So in text five, it seems like the mitzvah here is to rest on Shabbat. That's what we're talking about. But in text six, we see someone picks up. His guy is this guy's name is Rabbi Natan, and he picks up on a very interesting uh, nuance over here that there is actually another mitzvah we're not noticing. And what is that, um, Roy? Please read text six. Uh, 
A, per a person should not hate for work, hate working, rather they should love it. For just as the Torah was given with a coven, covenant, covenant, so was work given with the covenant, as it is stated. stated. Six days you shall work and perform all of your labor, but the seventh day is on Sabbath to the Lord. So what he's saying here, thank you, Lord, very much for reading, mm -hmm. is that just like, it's not, the, the thing is, the mitzvah is not just rest and Shabbat. It's work, and then you got to rest from your work. Mm -hmm. If you don't work to begin with, then there's nothing to rest from, right? Yeah. So working is part of the mitzvah. So there's actually a mitzvah, a, a commandment from God to go and work. Incredible. That's you don't great. have to work at McDonald's. So you still like doing this for You right? can work other places, right? It's still like if you're doing a mitzvah for working at McDonald's, you can still work. Right? You would, right. <laughs> I guess I could go for cost. So you don't have to eat the cheeseburger, though. You could work. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh, it's a mitzvah, I'm eating the cheeseburger. It's a mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> Us Jews love RuPaul's. We love it. <laughs> Vegan cheeseburger. <laughs> right? Like the, uh, like the, um, oh. a good joke about that. This guy eating cheeseburger, onion kipper at McDonald's. Yeah. But what's the mitzvah you want? Yeah. It's funny. And he's like, oh, but the mitzvah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Anyways, so, um, why is work so important? Um, so before we get to this big idea number two, we're going to do some work. Ready? So we're going to do an experiment. 30 seconds, all right? For yeah. these next 30 seconds, I want you all to space out. Completely lays your entire body to the extreme. <laughs> That's cool. Sense. Yeah, just absolutely nothing. No blinking. And I think you can blink. Except for my head, though. Whatever you want. Whatever. Anything you want for 30 seconds. Do whatever you want, but you cannot, like, uh, strain more than two muscles at once. Okay? okay? So, for example, frowning, it takes around 11 muscles to frown. So, no frowning. Smiling is like 18 muscles, zero smiling. For the next 30 seconds, starting from right now. Um, I'm not sure who was tolerated. One of you snorted over there. That's work. That wasn't allowed. Disqualified. Okay. For the next 30 seconds, I want you all to do burpees. Do you remember the burpees before? Okay. okay. Yeah. Burpees. Let's go. Bring off my keyboard, okay. 30 seconds burpees, and I want no slouches. Burpees, solid form muscles, push-ups. Hitting the ceiling, back down, burpees for the next 30 seconds, on your marks, get set, go, 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 burpees, go, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, work, work, come on, come on, come on, come on, 20 seconds left, come on, come on, come on, come on, give me all you got, come on, 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 you go! Come on! Come on! Here we go! Here we go! Hey! Hey! Come on, Dad! Come on, stop! Come on! Let's go! Akira, come on! <laughs> time! Time! Good job, Roy! Good job, Rachel! Woo! All right. Rebby, I right. did a hundred of them. You just can't see me. Yeah. All right. All right. Akira, where are you at? Come on! Come join us. What lane were you I, at? I want to, Rebby. I'm stuck in Costco. I still have no clue why. Now I'm pushing around a TV. Bro, Akiva, which lane? Just just come. Come whenever you can. You're being a beta. No. Yeah, you have 40 minutes left. Come on, Akiva, join the fun. Okay, so <sighs> reflections. How did you feel after the 30 seconds versus uh, the work versus the lazy? Give me the contrast. So how you felt you during, what? How felt during, during the burpees? How do you feel right after? Right after the lazy pot and right after the burpee pot? How do you feel? Yeah. Better, like, yeah. 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 Well, how do you feel after the lazy part? The same, like not even <laughs> didn't do anything. I don't know. I kind of felt bored during the lazy part yeah. and burnt out. 
Yeah. Like I'm done with the cage match. Thirty seconds. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you feel definitely feel better after your accomplishment. Yeah. Right. Is this good? Uh, did any of you guys do some burpees? I didn't see. I think Tal, you did some burpees, right? Yeah, I did. How do you feel? Maybe I did them. I did them, maybe. Um. Oh, good, Akiva. I feel like I've done some exercise. You know the feeling where you like move a lot and then you just kind of get get yourself out of breath. Right. For a little bit. Yeah, that's how I felt. I felt the same thing just in my head, Ruby. They were invisible burpees. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Right, Kiva, I'm going to give you some invisible money after this, okay? Enjoy. Enjoy spending that, that invisible Amazon. Ooh. Are you the invisible Amazon, Ruby? Because I would gladly I spend my money. Yes, I am. There you go. Yeah? Oh, what, what, can, what can I get at Rabbi T's invisible okay. Amazon store? You can get an invisible pair of tefillin to invisibly wrap every single day. Oh, so you're okay. saying I shouldn't wrap with real tefillin. I should only wrap with invisible. No, no. Oh, sorry. wrapping two pairs, one visible and one invisible. One on top of the other? No, no. Halakhically, uh, not okay. You will cease to be a mortal, visible person if you do that. So watch oh. out. So, right. so you're saying that if I put on my invisible phone and my regular ones, I myself become invisible? Yeah, it, it's complicated. The next CTU course is going to be about visible versus invisibility. Oh. Uh, we're going to bring Harry Potter in to discuss the oh. finer... Got it, got it. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. Thank you, Akiva. Um, uh, and as soon as you're done with invisibly shopping at uh, Costco, you're welcome to join us. Visible crowd. Visibles. We are the visibles. You're like yeah. the muggles versus the non muggles, right? <laughs> We're the visibles. No. We are the visibles. The visibles! Stick together forever! Visibles forever! Arr! Battle cry for visibles. Come on! Come on! Come on. Oh! Come on. Hey, Scooter! Hey, what's oh, up, dude? Scooter. Hey, are you visible, Scooter? Scooter, woo! Scooter, are you working? Let's come on, see some burpees, Scooter. Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, slide number. Okay. So, we're gonna find out why these people will work. The doctor. The. Let's do this down the bottom like that. We have the doctor. We have the uh, salesman. Coder. One of you guys, right? Money. Oh, yeah. It's like a computer programmer. Yeah? Yeah. All of it's for money. Page. Computer programmer, clearly. And the uh, Holy Baker. That's the Holy Baker? Ribby, the reason for all of them oh, is money. Oh, oh. Sorry, oh, sorry. Holy shovel? Baker right there. Who's money, Akira? The reason for all of them. You said, what's the reason for why each of those things oh. are working? And the reason for all of them is money. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Meaning they all have, meaning each one has a um they they all have like a purpose of course like the doctor saves lives but the reason they do it is because they have to live they need money so well yes sometimes and not and usually it's part of the reason but that's not all the time all the reason why there's sometimes another reason let's uh let's dive right in so big idea number two uh boredom laziness can drive you crazy work can make you happy so why do billionaires work? Tim Cook over here. He's worth 1.3 billion CEO of Apple, and he wakes up at 3:45 a.m. every single day. Yeah, that idea of you <laughs> working soon after work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of addictive working. See, yeah, he's been working yeah. so long, and he's like, I gotta work some more. Ah, give me some work. Ah! He's like a work junkie. Ah, work, work, work. And then this guy over here. You guys know who he is? Yeah. He's yeah. Great. He's worth 23 billion dollars. Probably more. That's right. It's incorrect. He's worth how much? Three hundred and two billion dollars <laughs> as of this past Thursday. <laughs> By now, he may be like three hundred thirty billion. This guy's he's like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Crazy. But yes, Elon Musk. And look how much he works. One hundred and twenty hours. And there's how and now many? it's eighty nine. He has oh. manageable eighty nine hours. Usually, people work a forty hour week. That's an average work week. And this guy, three hundred two billion dollars in his bank account. And he's working 80 hours a week, double the amount of the average guy at Walmart works. Wow. Insane. So why do they work so much? So here, on this activity on your notebook, rate from 1 to 10, or I guess it says a 9, but whatever. 1 to 9, um, how satisfying each of these activities are for you. 1 to 9. 
Uh, part two, section two. You don't have the activity? Uh. Okay, then I'll just read it out. You just give me a number. Ready? Eating, so wait, eating, what, eating what? ice cream. One to nine. How what? satisfying what? the activity is for you? One to nine. Nine. Eating ice cream, definitely. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, average A. Um, releasing a funny TikTok video. You know, a six or a seven. Six or seven. Seven. Six, or five. Five. Okay, average six and a half right there. Um, watching a funny TikTok video. Like three. Six. Like four. Like it's funny. Four. Like, like, six. like really funny. Okay. Seven. I've seen the funny TikToks. Seven. What do you say? Six. Three. CSA. Okay, so we got six right there, six and a half. Um, uh, completing a term paper. Oh, a term paper? Yeah. Oh, so that's a one. Three. Like a paper for school, for oh, example? Yeah. Completing it, finishing it. You're done. Give it Nine. In. Nine? I feel so happy fe feeling like that it's done. I had it right. over with and it's all done and I get to right. rest now and do whatever I want. Right. Depends on if I tried or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting back the hundred, yeah, really. Uh, right. um, finishing a marathon, twelve k marathon. Probably nine. nine. I've actually never been in a marathon before. Me neither. Really? I've been like five k. Like, nine. Young, yeah. It's really young. Yeah, I remember my, my mom like carried me like halfway. <laughs> like, I, I was younger. I don't All remember right. if I did this longer. All right, so you did like four of those things. I don't know how old I was. <laughs> was young, so, yeah. Oh, good for you. Um. Texting a friend. Oh, uh, what's up? Seven and eight. Seven or eight? Okay. Who yeah. is it? Four. Four. Like, actually, if I'm reconnecting with, like, a friend of mine, uh, I'm, like, a best friend, I'll get six. Yeah, six. It depends on that friend. Mm -hmm. Um, Rachel's, like, that thing's being one and nine. How about you, you text? Um. <laughs> Graduating high school. Oh, that's a nine. Well, I haven't done that yet. I have yeah, one more year. What is this? What do you expect it to be? Grand and happy and amazing. So, like, give me Eight or nine. I'm going to cry when I finish high school. Aww. That's special. Let me know when you're cry with I'm going to jump up in the air and say finally. Like this? Finally! Exactly. you look like a TikToker, man. <laughs> I look like a what? A TikTok boy. You look like you need TikTok. Oh. What grade is um Rachel and Roy in? Akiva, are you a senior? He is. Yeah, I'm a senior. Are you a senior? You're not a senior. Sophomore. I'm a junior. Junior. You're a sophomore? Yeah. Yeah. With the beard. You, the beard. Like a senior, yeah, you gotta work on that beard, man. So much that, like that, on, yeah. How many years does that take you to grow? This? You look like a junior or a senior. Yeah, no, I, I do look very old. <laughs> I do. Yeah, so, that. so I'm just going to write these down. So we had eating ice cream was an eight. Releasing TikTok video was a seven. Six, uh, funny TikTok video was like five. Uh, term paper was something nine, something four. So we're going to like 6.5. Uh, finishing a marathon was around... 8.5. Uh, texting a friend was like 5. And graduating high school was, um, if you don't know yet, maybe 8 or 9. So the ones that scored the highest actually was eating ice cream, interestingly enough. Uh, graduating high school and finishing a marathon. Which is interesting because all those three, besides for eating ice cream, so two out of the three, they uh, work. Yeah. So what is it about work that we love so much? The, Text 7. Oh, right. Uh, idleness leads to insanity. Doing nothing leads to going crazy. Having and this is. Nothing to idolize? Is that what it means? What? Like having nothing to idolize? Me, me, exactly. Having nothing. No. Having nothing. Idleness, as in like not doing anything. That's what I think idle means. Like just, you know, when, it's like the when your computer's buffering. <laughs> it's that moment that you like trying to watch that video, get to the good part, and then you see that. Yeah. And you just sit there doing nothing. They like go crazy, right? Yeah. And then imagine that for one day, a whole day, just sitting on a beach doing nothing. With just no coconut eating in your hands. 
not even meditating or just doing nothing. Not even meditating, nothing. Because I, if I, if I had to meditate, that would be work. That's kind of work. Be, work that, that's kind of work. Hard. It's work it's for your brain, yeah. exactly. Concentrating on something, exactly. So, like, really do nothing. Just, like, sit in a binge watching. Ah, mindlessly consuming. Mindlessly binge watching. Mindlessly playing, what's that the game? Assassin. I, <laughs> I don't play that game. I'm saying, like, over. when you mindlessly consume, you, like, pause the movie, like, damn, like, I don't want to do anything. Right? Like, and yeah. just start doing something. Yeah. Right? But, like, then you're like, oh, I wasted so much time. I'll sleep some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, um, it all started with Infinity Scroll, by the way. Facebook used to be. Go down to the page, go to the next page. Oh. And then they introduced, it was Facebook's fault. They introduced the infinity scroll, which you can keep scrolling, right? Oh, and, and then other people. Uh, oh, yeah, it's that. never ending. He, he does that thing. That's like, dangerous. you know, YouTube, Facebook, yeah, that's that, that's a dangerous fact. Um, Apparently, Facebook is now, like, doing a thing where it's, like, like a digital, like, telegram of someone. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying know. that. The, have you seen that? The VR, the AI. Meta? I'm yeah. I'm confused about that. But they changed their name, yeah. They're trying and to, how it works? They're trying to, like, basically, they said that you could, like, work with someone along, as if you were in the same room working with them. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. That's too much. It's way too much. Is it, like, VR or hologram kind of thing? Hologram, I'm not telegram. Yeah. Hologram? I meant, say, okay. I meant to say hologram, not telegram, yeah. yeah I thought it was a VR thing. Like, no. Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That they said they, they, their goal is to, um, you know, make it. That's so crazy. That's terrible. Like, right? Not, like, that is crazy. So you're just gonna be in your home right. doing nothing. Like you're literally depriving people of living life. You know. That's terrible. Like that's their goal. Like you can spend your life in a room and you'll be going wherever you want. You know. So, in the Torah, it has some more to say about this. Hex eight. Before we get there, let's see what um, Harvard Health tells us. Harvard Health wants to read this out for us. Can you go, one of you guys on Zoom, read this out for us? I give you, you can read this out for us. You see on the screen, Harvard Health. What does it say? Uh, it says Harvard Health recommends that the newly retired stay busy to avoid retirement blues. Is that interesting? That's cool. Right? They finally retired from work, and now it's telling them, hey. Or work, That's right? Complete idleness needs to which one of these things? Doing nothing it leads to mental disarray, more time for Torah, or relaxation. Which one? Mental disarray. Mental disarray. Yeah. Time for Torah. That's like work, right? Right. Or, yeah, work. Torah is work. So, what? What? That's a good video. <laughs> you want to reenact it? Okay. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure if it was this one or the other one, but. Let's keep going. Um, work is important. And why is work so important? That is because of text 8. Um, who are we up to? Edin or Tal? Which text? 8? Text eight? 8, yes. A person prefers one measure of their own over nine measures of gifted to them by another. It is dear to the person because they have worked hard for it. Rashi. Rashi, like we have discovered, Rashi is the foremost commentator on the Torah, Rashi. and he explains, acronym for Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhak, and he explains the Talmud and the Torah in ways that we can understand. So as we see, it's dear to the person. Why is your own work more important to you? Because you have personally worked for it, right? And like we'll see in the And granted it yourself. Work. Really quick, we're going to play really quick. Video. Unfortunately, you guys can't play it on the Zoom, but you guys will. you got to have right now two minutes. Okay, 120 seconds to work together to make out of these sticks and tape the best Eiffel Tower that you can make. Okay? Um, yeah, uh, okay. Ready? Work together. One Eiffel Tower, work together. You have two minutes. You ready, guys? Yeah. Work together, teamwork, and you guys can watch on Zoom and cheer them on. Any marks? Get set. And. Yeah. You got it, guys. Go, 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 go. Two minutes. Yeah. Go, go, go. You, 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 you yeah. hold it. I'm going to do it. Go. Turn them on. Turn them on. Come on. Here. Turn them on. Come on. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Right. Roy. Roy. Rachel. One minute, 41 seconds. 
Paper. Or put a hole through the paper so it's just dead. No, that's not gonna yeah. There. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Making another one yet? Yeah, no, no, it's just gonna make it all stay. Well, we'll build a TP. TP, okay. <laughs> Do you want to add more? No, that works. Yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like kind of modern, right? It's modern. It's simple. Okay. It's not the time. Beautiful. It's trendy. So, um, you guys can choose that, or you can choose this. Oh, I don't really. I don't really. Which do you prefer? I prefer my own version. Really? Okay. Why do you prefer that? <laughs> you know, like, everyone seems to give an answer, like, oh, I like your answer. No, I'm right, she's right. Uh, I rather well, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Well, answers are good. Oh, but... Because we worked on it. It's oh. ours. <laughs> and also because Are you ours... just saying because you don't want to say it here, though, or are you really... No, I mean, like, it, I don't, I mean, this one's, I mean, honestly, I don't know the budget for cool, but... Here's like, the thing, because yes. ours is more simpler, therefore, less people are going to be... There are going to be less people in line for it ah. because it's all simple. Right. So, you know, you have there's the no lines. You just exactly. get it. Wait, it looks like are kind we of setting like... this up for like an art show or something? Oh, oh yeah. We're setting this up for soft beats. Okay, well, I kind of do like ours because it's just like chill. Right. Yeah. That one's it's like... modern. Yeah. It's wonky. <laughs> yeah, this is like someone tried a little too mm-hmm. hard. You know, that's like modern. Mm-hmm. So, actually, this I made with my five year old daughter. But the oh, one, yeah. I did most of that. Mm-hmm. And it took us way longer than she did. <laughs> it took like half an hour. <laughs> but hey, let's do an activity. Uh, my kids always look for activity. So, we will stick with that. Good job. And this proves our point. Um, that we would prefer our own work, even if it's a very little bit, but it's our own work, our personal work. And not only is work, uh, our work valuable to us, if some people, if they didn't work, they would actually go crazy. Text 9, we see this. Text 9a, um, what happened when the people from Machuza, Chuzah, that was a town in ancient Babylonia, like 2,000 years ago, people lived there, pretty cool place, and it was Machuza. And let's see what happened when they didn't work. Eden, take it away. Text 9a, what happened when they didn't work? Workers of the Machuza become weak if they do not work. Literally weak. And, and read text 9b. You're reading so well. Please read that as well. 9b. In Makosa, people are custom, accustomed to carrying heavy loads, so sitting idle was difficult for them. Isn't that interesting? It was hard for them to just not carry heavy things. And in text 10, we say the same thing. Text 10, let's read it inside. You are happier and enjoy it more when you are teaching your students than doing nothing. As the Talmud says, when they wouldn't work, it would make them sick. And this is so too with regarding teaching Torah. Because when the teachers of Torah wouldn't teach Torah, they would get sick. And the Torah is an important pursuit of work. So while vacation is, is very important, and it, it's very helpful to us, nevertheless, um, we're, let's go back to this in a second. Uh, nevertheless, we see like here in America that this is the amount of vacation time people forego. So... Actually, interestingly enough, in California, they take the least amount of vacation time. 64% of vacation time is not used California in California. California is the vacation spot itself. I guess so, for living in vacation. But that means that if uh, they get 10 weeks uh, paid leave, right, then six of those weeks they're working. Oh. They choose voluntarily to not use those six weeks and work. The taxes are so high and the rent's so high, too. <laughs> so <they> gotta... <laughs> Our right. Arizona's a little lower. We're we're over here, and fifty six percent of our vacation time is not used. Uh-huh. So that's a loss there. Yeah, that's like working the entire July. So all the coastal cities take less vacation time. Right. Than... Well, uh, actually no. Let's see. Where is New York? Where's New York? I think New York is here. Oh, New England. I'm sorry. Yeah, fifty eight percent. Yeah. Cool that. Let's see, Florida. 54%. They're the least. They're the least less than us. Interesting, huh? 
Why do they use navigation stack? So uh, if we go back here to this slide. This explains. This is going to help us understand uh, what the what happens when we don't work. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. So this is us over here when we're on TikTok or Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or Snapchat, wherever it is. All right, this is us over here. Okay. Yeah. All right. You with me? Okay. This is here when we are using our skill, we're very skilled, but we're not being challenged, right? So what are we good at? Something gets me a good at. Um, guitar. Good. Guitar? Yeah. Okay, but you're playing the same song. Mary had a little lamb over and over again. Yeah, you're not. Okay? Yeah. You get I'm bored, right? Yeah. Okay. Up here is where we get challenged, right? With something that we're not good at at all. Right? So something we're not good at. Give me something you're not good at at all. Figure skating. Figure skating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and someone tells you you gotta figure skate for like really well within three hours. What are you gonna feel? It's in red over here. Anxiety. Anxiety. The perfect, where's ecstasy over here? And I'm not talking about the drug. Ecstasy is when you put your skill and you are challenged and you put them together, that is ecstasy. Right? Yeah. That is real good work. That's where you should all, if you're looking for a job to go to, it's something you're good at I and you'll get challenged. Yeah, you that. have those two things together, you will have some tough work days because you'll get challenged a little too far, but it's something you're good at, so you'll keep working harder and you'll get there. And then you'll be challenged a little more. And you'll always be living that ecstatic life. Okay? Mm -hmm. So hey, this is what we're talking about in the Torah. That the people in Mechuzah, they loved work. Because they were good at it and they were challenged. Right? Yeah. Well, we see the opposite in... Um, and we're just going to gloss over this part because it's not required to remember. But in, in uh, Mitzrayim, in Egypt, they would make them work and build pyramids. And those pyramids, some people say that are standing today, are actually not pyramids that we make. They're different oh. pyramids. You know why? Because they made them build it in the quicksand area. They would come back the next morning, and their building had went down in the sand a few inches. Oh. A few months later, that building was vanished. It was under the sand. Have people found it? I don't know. But it's there's this just kind of or disintegrated or whatever. Yeah. Sand. But but that's that's the worst kind of work. Well, you don't even see the, the fruits of your labor. You don't really, see, you know? Like when you go to the gym and you still got that flabby arm, you know? You want to see those gains! Let me see your gains! I got gains. Yeah! Let <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> me see your gains, Akiva. Let see your gains. You a TikToker? Oh, that TikTok oh, boy. Oh, hey. oh, wait, TikTok. Hey. oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> okay, let's finish up strong over here. Let's finish up strong. Um, section three. Section three. So now we know why work is good for us because it makes us happy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And this is the why people in love to work because it gives them, like we see over here back in text eight, you people prefer their own work because they're challenged and they it makes them work hard. And if they're not working hard, then they go crazy. But there's something more to our work. It's not just working for the sake of working, something you're good at. There's a deeper idea here. We're working to create a home. So what is it that Hashem, he builds a home and he asks Adam to work? Because he just wanted to teach him to be proactive. And, and why does God even care if we are productive? Like why didn't he create us, wire us to be that work doesn't make us feel happy? Why, why do he wire us this way that we need work to feel happy? Well, so we can worship him too. Oh, how, yeah. how's that? So, like, if you weren't happy working, then you wouldn't be happy learning Torah or spreading Torah and, like, putting up for him and stuff. Right. And, because, you know, it'd be like you know, God's work, but also you would hate doing work. Right. That could be good. That's a good, good rationale out right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lori. Anyone else want to share? Why did God wire us this way? Because it helps you work on your soul as well, right. and God wants to salvate our soul. So. It motivates us to work on our soul, to yeah. our uh, Beautiful. Okay, so let's see text 12. We're going to see very, uh, a very interesting idea that Hashem says. What does he say? Uh, who are we up to? I think Tal, or Tal, Akiva, back to you, Rachel. Text 12. Okay. 
For so said the Lord, the Creator of heaven, who is God, who formed the earth and made it. He did not create it for a waste, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Hashem created the world to be inhabited, and the Hebrew word for inhabited is Lashevet. Does anyone know Hebrew? It sounds like sit. Exactly, Lashevet. Another word for sitting is to settle. It's settling your chair. Yeah. Settle down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the word for the real, the best, the better translation would be this one over here, settle. Okay? It's not this guy. We'll get back to that if we have time. Um, ah! Oh. All right. We'll get back to that at the end of the video. Why can't I go to the next one? There we go. Settle. What does settle mean? Uh, like lay down. To stop. That's whatever you have. And, and okay. Just chill. All right, just chill. What else can settle mean? What to stop what with whatever you have or whatever you've gone so far. Put down something. Okay, put stop, put down something, right? Is there another way to translate settle? Um. Settle, like you're, you're settled, you know, you're already satisfied with what you have, so right. you're kind of done. But then, let's see text 13. Text 13, um, he did not create it for a waste. Roy, take it away. He did not create it for a waste. He formed it to be inhabited. God wishes for a civilized world. This then is what the uh, Midrash states, that when Abraham came to Israel and saw the people plowing, Namely, engaging in settling the world. He declared, I want to be part of these people. Oh, we see settling again, right? Circle the word settling on your papers. Settling is what Abraham saw. He saw people settling. Another way of saying another translation of settle is that you are, like, inhabiting. Mm -hmm. Right? You're, you're creating a country. You're settling uh, settlers, right? As the Americans were called settlers because they were creating a country. And settling is an important uh, work ethic, an important thing of work that we're doing. When we came into this world, Hashem didn't create us to work hard. He created us to, to work the, the to work the world, to settle the world. So when we are in this world and we say, well, why are we working so hard? It's because Hashem wants us to work the world. He wants us to work in the world to create and, and make it into a better place. And this is so important, working to make the world a better place, right? That kind of work, that, check this out. A gambler is disqualified to testify, text, third, text 14. Tal, take it away. One who gambles is disqualified from giving testimony. Really? That's crazy, so he gambles, so if you go to the casino, you're not allowed to be a witness. A witness can be, oh, I saw that guy killing someone, that's a witness. Or I saw this man lending this guy money, that's a witness. The, these days, if you want to get married Jewishly, you need two witnesses that saw the marriage happen. Till this day, there's two witnesses there. If one of them gambles, he is not allowed to be a witness at your wedding. Why? What's the big problem with gambling, guys? Um, Based on what we're saying here, right? It's just instant gratification. Exactly, instant gratification. Which could mean the same thing of like making money through raffles. The same idea, right? It's that you aren't working to inhabit the world, to make the world a better place. You're just, you're just, money's coming to you, right? And that is so important that we create the world and make it a better place, like we see in text 15, that a gambler is disqualified because they are not involved in settling the world, in making the world a better place. Settle, inhabiting, creating, innovating. All right, T. Yes. I have a question about that. So what if like it only happens once and you didn't mean to win from a raffle, for example, but you end up winning the raffle? Great you don't question. usually gamble, but you end up putting a raffle in the raffle just to try your luck, not for the sake of gambling, and you end up being given. Good question. I'm glad you asked that. And that's actually a question many people ask when we play dreidel. Dreidel is a form of gambling. When I was in Yeshiva, we had high stakes dreidel games. People would lose like fifty dollars in one dreidel game because uh, we play with like dreidel, five dollars, like you know. Gets no, whoever gets the gimel, oh, they get the gimel. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Gimel, so gimel's the best to get. So we would just play whoever gets the gimel first gets the pot. 
It was quick, you know, two games like that. Now, people were losing tons of money. I made 20 bucks in one sitting, and this guy lost $50. So, um, is playing Dreadle can, can make you a gambler? Oh, yeah, I can. I can start. <laughs> I, I remember in Israel, like this summer, um, first time I ever gambled, we were playing blackjack. And we played with shekels, and we put like I put like three shekels in, and just like a couple of shekels in there. Yeah. And then our uh, rabbi, the director, came in. It was like two a.m. and he was like, "Go back to your room." <laughs> <laughs> so. Wait, was he set up a gambling or just for you? Oh, because I was not. I was in the right room. I was uh, hanging out with my friends, like just gambling. Just gambling that. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Busted by the rabbi. Uh, did you make money or lose money? Uh, I made some. Like, I actually made, like, I think I started off with four, and then I had 12 shekel. Oh. And then I, I lost it all. I just wanted to do it for fun. I was like, I'll just, like, right. you know, having a good time, I'll just make it hard. Right. Just spend the money. Right. Well, uh, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to testify in my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Roy would still be good, and most of you are still good, and most people in the world are fine, even if you go into the casino, you're fine. Uh, a, a gambler is considered someone who is an addictive gambler. Oh, there's, that's really bad. Thing. Right, or basically someone who relies on gambling to make money. So you don't have a day job. Your day job is gambling. That person is disqualified from testifying. Someone who, even if you make and lose a lot of money, but you don't care about that money, that's the key. If you don't care about that money, then it's not a good thing to do. It's wasting your time. Because you could be spending the money on giving it to charity, and the house always wins, everyone knows. So, you know, you're going to lose money when you walk in the door. So give the money to charity instead of giving it to some, you know, bloated rich guy. who's actually probably Jewish. So it's not charity. Not, he doesn't need a charity. You know, give it to the poor people. But uh, that guy, would not, even that, would not be considered disqualified for testimony. It's just someone who relies on that money for, you know, buying his bread. Um, but what's the problem with that? What's the problem with, you know, making your money through gambling, right? Text 16. Ramam explains it. Adam, please explain it for us. Text 16. A gambler is excluded because he's engaged in something that doesn't contribute anything to society. It is axiomatic to our Torah that a person should only busy themselves on this earth in one of two matters. Wisdom to personally advance and grow or any activity that will contribute to society such as craft or business. Beautiful. That, and the person is not doing that. He's not either learning more, like we're doing right now, or he's not getting out into the world and making it a better place. He's just making money for himself. Mm -hmm. Complete, absolute selfishness. Just making money for himself, right? And I'm not talking about you, Roy, just playing it as a game. I'm talking about someone who, he, he's not interested in working, just working with other people, even just going into the workplace. Because when you do that, you talk to people, you say nice things, you give compliments, People look at you and say, wow, he's polite and he's Jewish. You're making it what's called a Kiddush Hashem. You're making a good name for Jews, which is a good thing, right? But you're not doing that. You just go to the casino sitting there and going, all right, counting your chips. Yeah. So that is why it's so important. But this, let's get a little deeper, and we're going to finish up in this point. And for this slide, I bring up to you, happy birthday, Akia! Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Santa Laura! Happy birthday to Akia! Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Are you saying Akiva or Ikea? Uh, okay, that's what I thought at first. Ikea. Figure eights, everyone. Figure eights, figure eights, figure eights. Figure eights. No, actually, no. <laughs> Roy, you're learning well. One day, Roy, when you will be a big professor in Harvard, you'll be <laughs> teaching your students how to figure eights. And remember, just remember, when you think of just remember me. Just remember me. Okay, tell them, there once was this rabbi. I called him Rabbi Eight. Huh? Rabbi Rabbi. Yo, 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 shake it out. Come on, guys. Figure eights. Come on, Tal. Come on, Adam. Come on, Akiva. Nice. All right. Get back down. Uh, six more minutes. Let's go. The last amazing point. Why is working so important? Why is settling the world so important? So we explain work is important because it makes you into a happy person. But even more than that, when we work... We're making the world into a better place. We are settling the world. That's why Hashem created the world and us in it so we can make himself a nice little world, right? But what's, why does Hashem care if we settle the world? Why does he care so much? What is, and why did he create the world in the first place? And this answer really explains why we are even here in this world. Hashem created this on the screen right here. He gave us eggs 
This is a funny joke because you know how Key always gives you like the parts, uh -huh. you know, and the yeah. instructions. You have to assemble it. So the joke is, here's your cake, Akia, you know? Oh. <laughs> here's your cake. Here's your parts with the instructions how to make it. Um, so that is what Hashem created, right? An egg, flour, <coughs> or, or more accurately, this guy over here, right? He created this pile of lumber, yeah. right? Yeah. And then he put us in it. And oh. our job in text 17, Roy, please tell us what is... Our sage's statement is well known. The purpose of creation is because God wanted it at home in the lowest possible place. Wow. <laughs> what is that? Hashem wanted it at home and in the way. lowest possible place. So let's let's focus on in on that for a second. What does the lowest possible place mean? Let's like, think about uh, it. The worst. Go, what's God? What, what do you think of God? What do you think of? What do you the think? highest place ever. Right? Yeah. Pure. Must be cloud. What else? What else? Blue you sky. Blue sky. It's like a light. Light, yeah. yeah. Halo is just halo. Bird tripping, yeah. The yeah. Bird tripping. Angels. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Can we get a, can we get a, put a nice little choir going over here? Oh. Like the violin. Do I sound like a Halloween spooky guy, or do I sound like a? Definitely Halloween spooky guy. Oh. Rah! <laughs> 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 Rubbing teeth in that. <laughs> right. You mean for this? <laughs> That's God, okay? Yeah. Now, when you imagine the worlds, Afghanistan, uh, the trenches, what do you imagine? Give me some of the key words. <coughs> Rats. Uh, dirt. Dirt. <laughs> Blood. Debris. Guts. Glory. Debris. Right? Sadness. Jealousy. What? Yeah, sad, sadness. Sadness. Jealousy. Depression. Do you notice that? A uh, complete contrast over here. Here's God, and here's the world. So this is why we say it's the lowest possible place, right? Because he's now further. You couldn't be further than God in this world, right? It's not even like a world of like it's a terrible place where there's robots that do the right thing. Not only that, is it a bad place? But the people on a, oftentimes, most times, don't do the right thing, right? Yeah. So why would God even want that? Because. In this world, I feel you, Roy. Because in this world, when we do the right thing and we choose to do the right thing, we are telling God the most incredible message. We can choose anything we want right now, but we are choosing to sit here and learn Torah. Yeah. We can be playing video games. We could be skateboarding. We could be doing everyone go Dave and Buster's and uh, the beach and the casino. We could do all those cool things. And we're not. We're sitting here and learning Torah, making that choice. And that is why God created the world. So that when we make that choice, we are making a little more room for God. Now, there's more room for God to enter the world because we're making room for Him. We're taking ourselves away a little and saying, I won't do what I really want to do. I'll do what God wants to do. And now God can come in. And the more we do that, the more space we leave for God to come over here and live in our world, creating a home for him. That's all right. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's what we read in text 18. I'll just, it's basically what I read outside, that God created a very dark world with a lot of pile of lumber. But when we do the right thing, what we do is we create this beautiful mansion. We create room for God to live in. And we do that by doing the right thing. Choosing to not do what we really want to do, but do what the right thing is to do. And that is, again, we read in text 19, that, and just focus on the second paragraph. By bringing out the true God, truly godly nature of the world, we transform the world into a home for God. Indeed, we become partners in creation. Not only do we do what God wants, we become partners in creation because God did this, but we do so you basically work with God? So that's why we're working, exactly. God basically left half the work for us to do. Mm -hmm. And when we do our part of the work, we create a home for God that now us and God can live together. Yeah, he gave us the resources, and he also gave us, but we, it's up to us to use our, exactly. we our resources, free will. Exactly, talents, exactly. The talents, the ability, everything. But we have to actually choose the right thing. When we choose the right thing, we create a home for God. 
So um, the takeaway for today is the next time you're binging, whatever it is. Like your, I mean, usually my phone will be Okay, yeah, me too. Like that, yeah. I just happened to be this part, just two, day, two nights ago. I was binging on YouTube for like an oh, hour. What were you watching? Terrible. Well, like, the, it shows you the stuff that you want to see. That's uh, so good. Of course, like some sports, some, uh, I like watching the, um, you know, like those random, like, it's so, I don't know, so satisfying, but like those random things of, uh, you know, guys building things. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like they, they go nature and build stuff. Yeah, there's yeah. Pasty, That's uh, like one of, that's, I, that's like my favorite, like going in nature and like creating something like, I, like I know. the best. Like, you know what mud breaks are? Some, like, I've never done it before, but yeah. Yeah, like... You create a mud, right? Yeah, you just get mud, put it in, like, however you want, and then it hardens, and then... You've done it? Yeah, I've done it. Cool. I made, like, a steak cooker. Like, oh, yeah? I put it in the oven, took it out, and I put, like, one of these through, <laughs> and I just put, like, a steak, and then I lit a fire, and then... I, I made, like, a YouTube video on it a long time ago. It's not up anymore, but That's so cool. Yeah, so I love, like, I love nature. Wait, you don't have the video anymore? I have it, but it's all private. Oh, you gotta share it. (laughs) (laughs) I'll 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 send it to you privately. Okay. I find watching people cook in nature satisfying. Yeah. They just bring a pot. Right. Oh, yeah. And food and just... Yeah, well, how about that guy, that guy that built yeah. like that pool, you know? Oh yeah, I saw that. Like, and it like brings like water from this yeah. lake with like a jug. Anyways, yeah. What does uh, the Torah say about like nature? Because that's like purely God. It's purely nothing man-made. It's all nature, you know what I mean? Um, let me stop the recording.